Welcome to Seafood 101. Hi, I'm Ken Saunderson with the Seattle Propeller Club, and today I'm joined by Bob Desell, who is the president and CEO of Global Seas. Bob, thanks for joining us today. Hey, Ken. Thanks for having me on here, and great to see you again. You bet. Hey, Bob, why don't we start off by talking about Global Seas, what you're involved with, a little bit about the history of this great company that you're involved with. Well, thank, thanks for asking about that, Ken. So, give you a, a, a slight briefing on it. We This company actually started back in around 2000, Global Seas. It's a management company for the different entities that we own. My partner and myself have been in this business for going on over 40 years now. We are involved in a myriad of businesses, not just Wild Alaska Pollock, which is my passion and forte, but also in stuff on the East Coast, herring, mackerel, um, uh, some pet food operations over there, cold storages, uh, uh, research ships, some hospitality stuff. Heck, for, for that matter, we've even got our main offices up here in Seattle or at the Admiral's House, which has uh, different venues and and and, and uh, corporate events up here also, and, and, and wedding events also. So uh, different myriad of, of, of uh, operations, but still, like I said, comes back to Wild Alaska Pollock. I always say fish pays for everything. And you're a Seattle-based company, correct? We are a Seattle-based company, yes. That's awesome. The, uh, I want to talk a little bit more about uh, other fisheries first before we jump into Pollock. Uh, you, you mentioned mackerel and the other fisheries. Tell me a little about those. So we're, we're in the herring and, and, and mackerel and, and squid on the East Coast. Along with our program over there is really kind of pivoted years back uh, with some of the fall of the quotas over there, herring and mackerel. We're also now into, uh, in, into pet food. We do a fairly large operation that we... Uh, Take care of a lot of uh, a lot of different uh, pet food companies, Nestle, Purina, uh, uh, Mars, Champions, those those type of guys, all, all the big ones, and of course a bunch of boutique ones, and and where we uh, congregate uh, uh, different kinds of fish, from salmon to mackerel to herring to to, to uh, you name it, including beef and 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 uh, chicken and, and pork now, and 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 uh, we do a mixtures for the different uh, pet food companies. And you're up to what? Ten vessels now. We have ten vessels. Uh, six here on the on, on the west coast that do uh, Alaska Pollock. Uh, a couple that do uh, research, and a couple back on the east coast that also do herring, mackerel, and, and squid. Now, getting back to your passion of genuine wild Alaska Pollock, talk to me about how you got into that business and why you're so optimistic about the the Pollock fishery. Well, it's kind of. You know, I started out in the shrimp fishery back in 1978 between high school and, and, and college as a ways to get through college. And um, in, in my second, uh, in my second uh, year of college, I ended up getting married at a very young age. And that's when my parents said, well, looks like you got to figure it out. And I can figure out a way to get through college. So uh, from there was the start of my career. I said, God, well, I better get back to Alaska, make a little bit of money so I can get back to college. From there, I really started growing passion because I the idea of running these great big Tonka toys. That's what I kind of consider boats, the great big Tonka toys. And so I, I, I looked at this, at, at we were shrimp fishing to start with, and then I got into bait fishing and, and seeing a lot of uh, foreign factory trawlers out there. I says, boy, is this something else? There's gotta be a big fleet out here or a large body of fish out here handling these big fleets. What's gonna happen? I did a little bit of studying then on the Magnuson Act and figured that, 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 that this is gonna get Americanized and how can I get in there and be part of that? I missed the king crab fish, we call it. That wasn't really my forte. So I went into fin fish operations and uh, doing that in the very beginning was of course like delivering cod to the, to the, to the bait guys for, for, for bait or for, to the crab guys for bait. And then eventually the joint ventures and joint ventures had to do with, with Pollock, mainly Roe Pollock during that time, the Shellacoff Strait area, and then finally out to Bogoslav and then the Bering Sea. Along with that, uh, uh, Yellowfin Sole, uh, Aka Mackerel, and, and Rock Sole, and then a myriad of, of, of fisheries along the way. And eventually uh, brought our boats shoreside, and really what was really, uh, I could see the handwriting on the wall, uh, it was a wild Alaska Pollock fishery <clears throat> being a very industrialized, large quoted out. And uh, I got really immersed in it and um, really kind of fell in love with the whole fishery. It's been, it's been an interesting, it's been an interesting adventure to say the least. Quite a journey, you know, and, and one of the spectacular results, I think, is just to see the incredible growth of wild Alaska Pollock, how it's been accepted in the marketplace. Talk a little bit about that growth and why you're optimistic about the future of Alaskan Pollock. 
You know, when we first started uh, fishing wild Alaska pollock, it was really for the row, for the foreigners, right? And Japan and Korea was mostly taking up the row. Um, I think th through Americanization, people were just trying to figure out how to get this wonderful fish out of the ocean and into the marketplace. So in the very beginning, we're just trying to find homes for this wonderful whitefish. And we never really considered it what a wonderful fish this really was, just trying to find homes. And it was more of a commodity. <clears throat> Now we're, we're in that next adventure in, of, of our lifetime and seeing where we can actually make a real value fish here, value proposition. Listen, we, we've been after this for 40 years, been laser focused in trying to get this fish effectively caught, processed, and to market in a very efficient manner. That's what really makes Swell Alaska Pollock wonderful. Low carbon footprint, we just got done with the LCA. We're probably gonna talk about that, but it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great story. And we're and we are we we've we are finally on on a, on a great road to see uh, see some real real uh, growth in our in our industry here. You know, and the big part of that success story has been the role of the genuine Alaska Pollock producers. I know you're on the board of directors. Talk a little bit about uh, that organization and the tremendous success you've had in marketing genuine wild Alaska Pollock. Well, so Gap's been around for uh, longer than than I have been involved with Gap. <clears throat> I got involved with GAP here on, we call it GAP 2.0. We decided to kind of restructure it, make it a CEO operation where it was CEO uh, decisions made. Um, um, different aspect of the whole industry have now gotten together and is represented. So you got motherships in there, you got factory trawlers in there, you got inshore uh, inshore uh, uh, plants that are involved there. And then I kind of represent, call it the catcher vessels of, of, of the industry that are in there. Um, G Gap uh, made a shift on its leadership. We had Pat Shanahan in there uh, running the organization, did a great job and really got, got it going. And, and then when the shift to Gap 2.0, we brought in a, a new guy by the name of Craig Morris. Craig's been a wonderful advocate for, for Gap um, and for Wild Alaska Pollock. He's got passion. He, he, he knows how to speak the language and he knows how to get it out and, and we're really making inroads and, and getting notarized. So um, it's, been a, it's been a fun adventure again and it's great to work with industry and it's really great to work with a bunch of group of guys that, that, that are on the board of GAP. And you've got a great story to tell, the nutritional value, the sustainability, all the different metrics that are involved. You mentioned the, the study that was recently output. You might want to talk just a second about that. It just, it, all of that adds up to a remarkable story about Wild Alaskan Pollock. So the one thing that, that we decided at, at, at GAP is how do we fund a industry-sponsored uh, uh, group? And then how do we spend that money out there correctly? And... You know, you can market all the right ways, you can put billboards up, but that's really not a forte. The better way to do it is to, to get partnerships in there. So that's what GAP has done. It, it's, it's funded by industry. We take out a lot of those funds and partnership up with different people that are actually out in the marketplace. So we want to see innovation. We want to see collaboration. We want to see uh, uh, places with that that maybe Wild Alaska Pollock hasn't been into and in different forms and different types. So that, that's been some of the story that it goes along here. So with that, we also started different committees with inside the, the group itself. And I'm a head of the uh, sustainability committee. And so one of my passions has been always in the whole time here has been, what's been our carbon footprint? As, as we all know that things are changing now in, in the world it used to be, what's the calories and how much does it cost me for the sandwich? Well, as we are, are, are aging up a little bit further and, 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 and realizing what's the carbon impact? What am I eating today and what is the carbon impact? We're seeing that all across Europe. Matter of fact, Panera Bread has now put it on their menus where the, the also shows what the carbon footprint is for that particular sandwich. And we'll probably see that more and more and more. Um, and what a fun thing to be involved in. So I really wanted to see what our carbon impact was in the Wild Alaska Pollock Fishery. You're always a little bit nervous of it, but when we really started digging into it, we realized that we have a great story to tell. And the story is, is we have a very low carbon footprint in, 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 in comparison to any other protein that's out there. 
industrialized protein. So um, we're quite proud of that. It's 3.77 uh, kilograms of carbon footprint for, for, for every kilo that we're putting up of protein. It's an amazing story. I mean, why are you so passionate about sustainability? Why is that so important to the future of the fishery? Well, one, I got two young kids. So that's the first thing I wake up to every morning. I get, you know, they're seven and eight years old. And so you wonder what's their life going to be like uh, going out further. And things have changed. You know, we've, we've got to move with, with, with you got to be able to change in, in your time. You can't be stuck in old ways. And if we can help provide a, a choice in a dietary choice for people that can look at a hamburger that may have a high, a high uh, carbon footprint versus fish that may have a low carbon footprint, um, we want to make that choice. We're not the silver bullet in this, in this impact, in this, in this warm, uh, in this global warming, but it's, it's a dietary choice that people can actually look at now. And so when my kids, maybe in the future can look back and say, hey, my dad had just, just a tiny bit to do with this. That would be really important to me. That's great. That's great. You know, the other thing I wanted to briefly talk about is uh, great careers. Uh, Global Seas has hundreds of uh, team members as a part of your family. Um, talk about the shore side as well as the at-sea opportunities there are to find a great career in the fishing industry. There is. You know, when, when I start out, we, it used to be so darn dangerous. You, you really took... I wouldn't call it a gamble, but it, it was. It was a gamble every time you went to sea. Um, listen, when, when I first started, there was barely even survival suits on, on these boats. Nowadays, we are providing great jobs, great benefits, and 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 really safe environment. Um, we want our people to come home safely. We want to be able to, to be able to provide them a really good job. And things have changed substantially. On board the ships, you know, everybody got access to internet nowadays, uh, great movies. That doesn't mean that you're not going to work hard. You're going to work extremely hard. That's the one thing that we really pride ourselves in. But you're providing a lot of food to the world. And that's pretty important. So we we do have jobs always available, whether it be on decks of a boat or, in, or on, on the shoreside facilities. Uh, lots of lots of plants in Alaska always looking for people on the shoreside facilities and certainly the, the factory trawlers are too. And hey, what's better than a great adventure? I mean, that's that's where I started. It was an adventure, go up to Alaska and it made my career. So I invite anybody to, to go up to Alaska and get on board one of these boats. And if it's not your forte for your life, that's okay, but you've done it. It's one of those things you can check off later on. You can always tell your kids, I went to Alaska when I was a young man or woman. You know, Bob, your passion today really comes through about the fishing and seafood industry. How about the future? Are you excited about the future of uh, the industry? I am. I, I think that we have a great future. Um, you know, I live and die by by the fishery in Alaska here. And we live and die by the science behind it. And the one thing about Wild Alaska Pollock is it's got great science. We've got 40, 50, 60 years worth of science behind it. Um, and I do worry about uh, global climate change. You, you really don't know what Mother Nature is going to do to you. But it's proven over and over again that we are in a very dynamic uh, fisheries that, that keeps producing. And, and like I say, I've been after for 40 years. So I see this as a continuing uh, future for, for the, the, the wild Alaska pollock fishery. What a great story. Thanks for joining us today, Bob. Thank, thanks, Ken. Appreciate you. Give me a call anytime.